Shakespeare only has one wife and has to share her, well, that's only half a wife, so he must be really jonesing for one more. And hmm. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And from a practical perspective, it's it's um, this sort of situation attracts all kinds. Mm -hmm. And it will attract people who are good for us. And it will attract the ones that are just out to get something or out to use or out to hurt. Cray cray. Cray cray. It will attract the crazies. And it's actually not that difficult to sort them out if you're honest with yourself. Oh, yeah. there. And, you, mm -hmm. and don't ever ignore your common sense or your intuition. Oh, my God. Don't. Don't ever. We've learned so many lessons over the years. The hard way. Mm -hmm. anyway. um, one one thing I found. Uh, I read a tweet. And I wish I could remember it. I read a tweet earlier. Should have written it down. Should have put it on a list. Hmm. Go back to drinking your coffee. Get, just go, go, go ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, you were saying. Hmm. So I read a tweet earlier, and, it, and they mentioned something about how. In an open relationship, you have, like, you typically describe it as ethical non-monogamy. Like, why does it have to be put as ethical? Because of the fact that it's non-monogamy? It's well, an open relationship? Well, cheating is non-monogamous. Right, I get that. But the thing is, with an open relationship, it shouldn't have to be described as ethical. I mean, you can have a non-monogamous relationship that's not ethical. Trust me, I've seen and, that quite often. Well, uh, I guess that's what it is, is there's two two forces working there. Mm -hmm. There's one that the default was monogamy. Mm -hmm. The default. So it's in people's heads that that's the way it's supposed to be. So if you differ from that, now you have to label it mm -hmm. non-monogamy. And since cheating is non-monogamy, now we have to say it's ethical non-monogamy mm. to differentiate it from cheating, which someday, I, I don't know if the terms will ever shift, but you got to admit that it's a lot easier to say it that way than it is to call cheating non-ethical non-monogamy. Well, it's like okay, you point. have to say gay marriage instead of why isn't it just marriage? marriage? Yeah, because yeah. our, yeah, our friend parked his car today. He didn't gay park it. He didn't buy gay groceries. He didn't go to the gay store to buy gay groceries. He just did those things because they're things that people do. Right. And that's what it is. But gay marriage is, has to be defined as, oh, God, right. I, I hate society sometimes. <laughs> and, yeah, and we're looking forward to the day we can drop these extra terms. Hmm. Because yeah, it will I'm just be. Known. Yeah. It just is what it is. It's a norm. Right. It, it's why, why does it have to be classified as something else? It should be just the fucking norm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, just breathe. All right, honing it back in here <laughs> to the uh, misconceptions of polyamory. Uh, they also believe that it's bad for kids. Mm, more oh, yeah. oh, wait, 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 wait. You know, didn't you experience that with one of the schools when everybody said, oh, it's nice to see kids have more love? Yes, that was the exception, not the rule, though. Well, We're oh, coming yeah, to no, find no, out totally because that. of it's... all the issues. Well, we already did an episode on that. Right, so. right, right, right. But, you know, but how... yes, a lot of the uh, misconceptions revolve around children and the fact that it's bad for them. Mm. I've seen improvement in, well, the three that I had before, we all joined our family. They showed serious improvement in every aspect of their lives, more confidence. Uh, more sociable, more everything. And if you're worried about, well, kids getting uh, singled out at school, well, really, this is no different than being the only Jewish kid in the neighborhood or being, you know, oh, they won't have any poly friends to play with. Actually, you know what? The, the, wait, wait, wait. I know what the poly friends are called. Friends. Yeah. Hmm. You won't have hmm. any polyamorous uh, you know, family friends to, to play with. Well, you know what? Actually, we know a lot of people being polyamorous has that effect. That is true. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, yeah, they will have friends um, and they'll have friends who understand. And at first we had some issues with our kids being afraid to admit that they had extra parents around. Uh, but once they, what they found was and what they've all one by one told us is that the people who didn't want to be their friend because of it were never going to be good friends. Mm -mm. No, they were just they, they weren't going to be good friends at all, period. Yeah. And it, even if that was never a thing, they just wouldn't have been good friends. When uh, there were studies done and research conducted, basically there were no more disadvantages in polyamorous families than there were for regular, what's considered regular monogamous family dynamic. And especially when the families are divorced and remarried or dating, you know, you might say that there might be the disadvantage of the children getting attached to whatever partners you may have and if they end up leaving. 
Well, that's the same with any other relationship dynamic. Right. The you cycle through partners in that respect as well. Mm -hmm. But um, and you hear about that all the time, and people kind of grit their teeth and bear it on that, but they never point it out as a problematic thing. But there was a lot more advantages to having a polyamorous family because there are more people around to make sure the children's needs are being met and um, being able to delegate responsibilities, being able to tend to, you know, lots of lots of things for the children. So they end up feeling more supported and more heard and seen and taken care of. If and I mean, of course, you're going to have defunct people all throughout any kind of right. um, structure. But as a whole, when you when you have decent people who are taking care of children the way children should be taken care of, then they're going to be properly cared for. There's extra people to help with chores, yep. uh, disciplinary issues, encouragement situations, help with homework, extra arms to, for hugs. Yep. Mm-hmm. And how is this how is this going to be to the child's disadvantage? Exactly. Another topic? Yep. Another topic is that polyamorous people have more STIs. Mm. They are more prone and more um like basically you must just be disease ridden. I if I'm not mistaken, um there's uh what's it called? Um uh, safe something safe Sex is it safe? Uh, there is something like that, right? Something, I, I yeah, don't. <laughs> where you can use protection. And if I'm also not mistaken, that even monogamous people can get STDs. That's weird, right? <gasps> no. Yeah, they can. They Wait. totally can. And the worst part is, uh, is with monogamous people, and their if the default is monogamy, and the only way they can express their polyamorous urges is to cheat. There's a tendency for a disease to be spread very quickly yeah. right, because, because nobody knows they have anything right. and it's undetected or they're lying about it or you know not saying anything actually it's shown that polyamorous people are more apt to be tested on a regular basis so they know they're they're more educated in regards to protection in regards to prevention in regards to hey show me your papers right you like know literally, they're, they're like, actually going to ask you hey when's the last, when's time, the you've last time you've been tested what do you have that's going to be one of the first conversations that you have really before early. Mm -hmm. you get heated or into anything mm -hmm. if you're being responsible because when the clothes are hitting the floor is a bad time to bring it up for the yeah. first time by the way when's the last time you got tested yeah, yeah. bad idea and, so, and i know most poly people that we've talked to like we've had open conversations about it just with you know in poly groups and in just general circle of friends is the fact that you know before anything gets too hot and heavy before to even think about that they're gonna say hey when's the last time you got tested yeah so because and that's just in general conversation it's one of those things that you, you really you know should look into okay <laughs> next topic we're moving trying to move quick here we've been running you guys long for the last couple episodes so we're trying to keep it down shorten, up to, a little bit. shorten it a little bit for you guys but last time we had a that was a that was a that was an episode <laughs> so there's a few. I still have a lot. The kids have said that one of the common questions they get when they say that, you know, their parents are polyamorous is, how does it work? How does that work? And so then they're like, what do you mean? How does that work? You know, so they have all of these probably uh, scenarios and ideas and things spiraling around in their heads and the kids have to lay it out for them. So it's constantly them going around explaining themselves. I think some of that is, a lot of that is questions about uh, bedroom logistics that they mm -hmm. don't want to ask, but they feel they have a right to know. It's one of those things that, it, well, I mean, this, and people in the LGBTQ community get this all the time. The T in the LGBTQ community get it all the time. They get questions about the state, appearance, presence or absence of their genitalia and so, people think they have a perfect right to ask that question right and right. the fact that like you wouldn't ask any other person right like oh hey by the way uh what do you have in your pants awesomeness right <laughs> and, that's really yeah. all you, and that's what you should say because yeah. fuck them they right. don't need to have know. a glitter cannon bitch you better be prepared <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. I kind of would explain a lot. Yeah, what do you have yeah. in your pants? Darkness and shadows. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody's really creepy, you can just tell them it's a cluster of spiders. Go away. <laughs> Ooh, spider webs and a yeah. dustpan. Oh, God. A moth. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what do they call those uh, rolling desert things? Um, tumbleweeds. Tumbleweeds. Yeah. You have a tumbleweed down there. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> As polyamory people, we just hate commitment, don't we? Oh, right, 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 right. Like, we just run from it. We are so afraid of committing. Didn't we just purchase a house together? <sighs> commitment phobes Wait, that, we are. Pr- that <laughs> proves nothing. It proves nothing. We are right. just afraid of commitment. And, and Jay, uh, like we said earlier, we've been together for a bit of time. A yeah, bit, uh, yeah. Like a couple decades. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know. A couple decades under the belt. That kind of puts that you in shows the nothing. Hall of fame. Right. That shows nothing. Right. It shows nothing. That's that's not commitment. They have all. it all right. You know they mm-hmm. they know they yeah. know what's best. Run from commitment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, doesn't doesn't that indicate that? If I'm dating somebody that you're not involved with, that you're automatically up for grabs, that you and and Crow, that Zan and Crow would also be automatically up for grabs if I was dating, I don't know, Jane down um, the road. That is something that I'd like to address that comes into that. Yes. It was, there's this weird thing, especially it's directed toward men, I think, more th- more so than women, although you, you see it both ways. Maybe I just see it this way because I am male. Uh, Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. what? Yeah. You, when I'm did sorry. this happen? I thought you knew. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. You didn't see when, uh, anyway. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, I was at uh, a party, mm-hmm. and I had a partner, and I was with said partner at said party, and there was some drama going on with some outside friends. And one of those friends called in to my partner's sister and threatened to come to the party to just crash the party to have sex with me wait what now, i wasn't even involved in the conversation she just seemed to assume that if she offered the answer would be yes it was it was just that cut and dry she just assumed that she could ruin a relationship as revenge just by showing up and saying come hither because you're that easy because I don't even know, I can't even begin to speculate what her reasoning was. But when I'm getting told this story, and I was told secondhand, it was kind of like, do I not get a say in no, this? No, you don't, you don't. Just to put it out there, I'm very sapiosexual. This girl was not my type. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I have never experienced that before. I don't think so. Um, no. Yeah, I haven't experienced that. Dear God. Yeah, it's it's a thing. Wow, I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't because <laughs> I would have a thing to say about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so did I. It was it was just one of those things. Like, how insane does a person have to be about to that think insane. they can just? It's one of those things. It, it's so scary that there's such an assumption about it. Mm. Like, how prevalent does this horribleness have to be for there to be that much assumption? Right. So, to somebody think they can be on that safe a ground to just assume that they could do this thing, right? Yeah. Because poly people are easy. Uh, they or didn't, just, yeah. Well, not easy, but yeah. we have no morals, morals or no boundaries moral or say so or oh no, it's you know. it's worse because she thought I was monogamous. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So of course I was going to cheat because yeah. married men are easy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so on the other end of that, none of us get jealous, right? Oh, God. Oh, uh, I never <laughs> no. uh, I never no, get jealous. No. No. We never nope. get jealous. Nope. We never Doesn't. feel a jealous pang in our body, twinge, nope. nothing, never. What is that anyway? Yeah. What the is jealousy? J- oh, the J word. Mm. Oh, wait. I have a feeling. We had I thought you were the J word. I thought, <laughs> I thought the haven't. bird was a word. <laughs> So now look what you did. Yeah. Now you're, look, you're, look, you're you welcome. did this. You're welcome. You did this. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. glad I could help. Oh, yeah. I'm actually enjoying this. It's so playing in my the, head. Th- the thing about it is, yeah, of course we get jealous. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course we get jealous of each other. Just like anybody gets jealous of everything. You, people don't just get jealous of sexuality. They get jealous mm-hmm. of time. They get mm-hmm. jealous of emotions, of, of, of moments, of... of Intimacy. Uh, you, it could be anything. How many times have you gotten jealous because a f- two of your friends watched a movie and they forgot to invite you? Yep. How many times have you been jealous that because somebody got a promotion at work and you were doing the same job, but they got the promotion as a result? They didn't find the body. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> we get jealous. Sorry. We just deal with it in very effective ways. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been listening to a lot of really good true crime podcasts. And, oh, my God, I got some awesome ones out there. But that is the only difference. It's not that we don't get jealous. It's that we talk about it early. Yeah. 
Yeah. We talk about it often. We work on it. We work on it. And we don't just say, well, that's your problem for being jealous. A lot of poly people say that and they say,